Hello everybody, this is Hakobo with your my first ever video tutorial and what we're going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to start in the program uh, Shake and you can do this with other programs too I'm sure um, Adobe After Effects or Photoshop but I'm going to be using Shake because I, I like that program the best and I would encourage you to get it if you don't have it then we're going to go from there and put it into Maya um, and get kind of a cool person turning into smoke effect for this clip um, and then I will take it out of Maya and put it back into shake and try to show you a fairly finished shot and I'm gonna try to keep it fairly brief um, not wait around for render times and this is an effect I've done a lot of times before so um, I even kinda have it pre-set up in Maya, but I'll definitely go through and show you everything I set to get it like that. But here is the effect, or it happens many times in this clip, but this is one of the finished clips. And this is an HD file, it's going a little slow, I might try playing it again. Hopefully we can get full speed on that. But Alright, well it's lagging a little bit. You can see that they're puffing up into smoke and each turning into smoke each time. And that's the effect we're going to create using Shake in Maya. Um, and yeah, I, I created a smoke effect both for when they puff up or puff down in smoke and then also they have the smoke effect when they're coming back in and use other stuff for the window blast and the wand spells um, that's quick paint for the and roto shapes and fire effects but there's two smoke effects here one coming out and then another coming back in reappearing so let's get started here I have our new clip um, and I just use some roto shapes, so they're running along. So this one I actually want them to kind of keep their momentum and the smoke is gonna puff up here. Um, so yeah, right at this clip he disappears. I've already done the first one for this. So here's the last clip that he's there. And what we wanna do is make the clip just him and nothing in the background. And what I use for this, um, I use two things, both a roto shape and a quick paint, um, which you can do in After Effects as well. So I'm going to create a roto shape, 1280 by 720, that's what we want. Um, you can just plug it in here, but what's a lot better to get used to using is a switch mat, which you put in your clip here and your roto shape here because then you don't have to insert it directly into a clip. You can apply a move to do it, then do switch mat and do your roto shape onto it. Already moved to the move to D. So that's this is going to offer you a lot more freedom. So I'll just click this here and pull up the attributes of the roto shape. Then just add a shape in there. And I'm going to really touch it up with my quick paint. So I'm just going to get a general outline so I don't have to do too much work with quick paint. You can use one or the other to do the whole thing, but I find it actually goes the fastest using both roto shape and quick paint because with roto shape you're not painting out the entire frame here, but quick paint allows you to get really close to the edges and really analyze stuff closely. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time with this. I actually created the roto shape and quick paint already for this one, so I'll just show you really quick how you'd go about doing this if you want to. And then we close it off. I always add a blur to it um, for something like this. It can be as low as three, but it, it just will look better if you add a little blur to the edge in anything you're doing really. So. Now we have that roto shape in there. And then if we also add a quick paint node and go to the reveal tool, that'll get rid of it. And of course, scale down your brush size a lot. 
actually find, then you can go and really closely and analyze these edges. I thought originally it would work better. You can see kind of the edge right here. That it would work better to, you know, go in all the way here, um, all the way to the edge. But you actually, even with quick paint, you want a little bit of blur. It ends up just not looking as good in the end, actually. Um, so this is feathered versus not. So I want feather and brush size a little bigger than what I want because you do kind of want a somewhat blurred edge. Zoom out so you can see what you're doing. Then you can really go in there with the fine details and make it look exactly what you want and not really confined to roto shapes. Um, I like Shakes rotoscapes much more than Adobe After Effects. Um, it's really easy to curve things. You just go in here and click curve, and then you go to the next. It's kind of locked in After Effects. And here you can go to the next frame and uncurve anything you don't want. Here they're curved, here they're not. Um, you have a lot of control. If you hit Command, you can go in and do that edge or do there, and you can really make ton of different shapes really easily and they just don't get as twisted or as tangled as they do in Adobe After Effects. So I already went through and it doesn't have to be perfect. Here's here's kind of the trace I did around him for this. And so once we put it into Maya, it's gonna have this and we don't want to put a this is showing black, but this is actually an absence of anything in the background right now um, at this point you don't want to put in black because um, right now this is completely see-through so um, we want once we put it into Maya the, the smoke is gonna there's a thing called buoyancy which we'll go into but it's important to know that as you're exporting it and buoyancy will either make it rise up or down so I want to write, want it to rise to the side so there's not really a perfect way to do that except what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it so that when it rises up um, it'll be sideways um, kind of like that um, let me add a new one make sure that he's rotating the way we want it go to transform move to D I'll turn off keyframes so it just sticks um, so yeah, we want to, so we want to rotate it this way, and I guess I'm not going to rotate it entirely 90 degrees, so it kind of will rise up a little bit if it's complete, once you rotate it back in and put it into your shot, just so, since it kind of spreads out, if it was completely rotated, that 90 degrees, it might go below the ground, which we don't want. So, yeah, I'll get it to about there, and you can, pressing option middle mouse, you can scale it up a little bit, um, get sort of a bigger smoke effect, and then we'll, we'll scale it back down once we get in, but it shouldn't be a problem at this point. So now he has somewhere to go, smoke's going to rise up. Um, and that's pretty good and we'll just have to remove that around until we get in the place we want but we'll see now the smoke will be puffing up which when we rotate it back will be sideways which is good and you want to save this as a still image um, you can save it as lots of different files I just use a jpeg generally um, Maya likes that fine and it's worked fine for me. So what I want to do is image file out, um, save it onto my hard drive, and we'll just do, since they're running, running Lewis Apparate 1. And go in, make it a JPEG, and that's all I need. I'm going to render that out, render file out node, and just do 109 through 109. 